North America has the greatest known diversity of freshwater mussels in the world, and they're also the most endangered group of animals in North America. They've evolved a pretty crazy relationship with fish. The way it works is female mussels spend the winter buried underneath the sediment, brooding thousands to millions of larvae inside their shells. These larvae, in order to develop into juvenile mussels, have to spend a couple of days to a few weeks living on the gills of fish. So here what we're looking at are tiny mussels that are still inside the female and they're flexing their little shells. This is a close-up view inside a female mussel. These are rows of little packages called conglutinates, and they've got hundreds of mussel larvae packaged inside of them. Packages of larvae are wrapped in a membrane to make it look like fish food, insect larvae or fish larvae that other fish might want to eat. They've got a bit of adhesive on the tail, which attaches them to rocks, and they wiggle in the current just like a real fish larvae would. In comes a fish, and it snaps up one of the larvae. If you look closely around the gills, you see a little cloud of larvae coming out. The fish pulls it into its mouth, but most of it passes over the gills and out the sides. That gives the larvae a chance to catch onto one of the filaments of the gill, clamp tight with its shells. So I took a trip to Virginia and Tennessee to have a look at centers where mussels are propagated in tanks to build new populations. There's actually a lot of research involved in figuring out how to culture these juveniles. They tag them in order to figure out how well their efforts are working. I went with Jess Jones, who's a biologist with the Fish and Wildlife Service. This is the first time I'd ever seen tobacco drying in a barn. And we went to the Powell River, where his field assistants took thousands of these mussels and scattered them into the river. We saw a lot of coal mining activity, trucks driving into power plants and coal mine and coal trains. For decades, this caused a problem for the mussels because it was harming the water quality. Things have improved, and right nearby that power plant was a really pristine stretch of the Clinch River. Researchers here are trying to figure out how well the restoration work is going by counting how many mussels are in the river. So they count them, they measure their size to figure out how well they're doing, and it turns out so far the signs are pretty good. The mussels are growing well, few of them are dying, they're even finding juveniles, signs that the population is reproducing. It's a long day's work, but every bit of this helps make sure that these amazing creatures are going to keep surviving. <laughs>